Bob, a very warm welcome to uh, another lecture on forecasting and today we're going to look at a, a thoroughly modern forecasting package which is provided open and free via Facebook and um, the package is called Profit um, and it's uh, a really great, uh, in my view, a really great package for forecasting um, daily level time series within health services. Um, so uh, there is a Facebook page, uh, facebook.github.io profit, um, which you can link to, um, and that has all the information about um, profit, uh, including the, um, the paper, forecasting at scale, which you, can, which you can take a look at, which goes into some more of the theory, um, has information about how to install it, we're going to look at how to use Profit in Python today, but it's also available in R. Um, so within each of those sections, um, there's, doc there's detailed documentation for the package. Um, how do you create Profit objects? What sort of format should your data be in? Um, and how do you forecast with it? Um, we're going to have, that's with a very particular data set, that's with a, um, the daily views of a Wikipedia page for Peyton Manning. Um, however, we're gonna look at it with some uh, proper health service data today. Flip back to the main presentation, but do check that out. Uh, so what is the motivation for profit? Um, so in, in many ways, profits um, has taken old ideas and implemented them in a really uh, nice package that's easy to use and it's slightly different from how things have been done before. It, it seems to work very, very well for daily level data. Um, so that's kind of the, the overriding motivation is, is modern forecasting at a minimum kind of needs to be at a daily level, but you can use it at lower levels. So you could use it at an hourly level. Um, you can also use it at a higher level. So you could use it to, to forecast monthly level data or weekly level data if you wanted to. Um, but it seems to sit very nicely at this daily level. Um, and the reason for that is that this, time, this type of time series has seasonality at the weekly, the annual, um, level so there's multiple types of seasonality there and it has these spiky events in it it has these special events um, holidays for example may cause huge influxes of demand on certain types of um, health services and profit makes that really easy to to model um, the other motivation behind um, time series uh, uh, forecasting through profit is um, F Facebook's view was that um, its expertise is the main uh, limitation in terms of applying forecasting. So there are um, lots and lots of time series to forecast and very, very few people to forecast them. Um, so f a lot of what Profit does is automatic and is tunable. Um, which means that you can do this, this idea of forecasting at scale, scale. You can make many forecasts really simply. Um, and that's quite different from other classical approaches which required a lot of um, detailed analysis of individual time series to decide what forecasting method should be used. Um, Although there have been, so, so for example, I'm, I'm talking really there about um, ARIMA modeling and, and there have been really fantastic packages put together to help automatically choose ARIMA models as well. Um, but in, in, general, in general, it is quite hard to forecast this type of data. So profit is a way to, to simplify that process and enable you to forecast lots of time series automatically. So here's a motivating example from healthcare. So this, this is from a real project that the Southwest Ambulance Service are working on. Um, so this is the daily number of um, 
calls that result in one or more dispatches of ambulances. Um, so what can we see in this data? Um, so there's quite a lot of data. It goes all the way back to 2014, we can see. Um, is there a trend? There may be a slight trend in the data over time. Let's get my pointer. So we can see that it is gradually increasing maybe. Um, there's definitely some sort of uh, cyclical pattern going on. Um, so there's some sort of pattern within the year um, that, that we can pick up on. Um, it's difficult to know if there's a pattern at the weekly level, just looking at the data like this. Um, it's just too much data to make that decision. Um, but the other thing I wanted to point out is we've got these red blobs here. Uh, so that those are, these are, this is New Year's Day every year, there's a spike in demand, a predictable spike in demand. Um, and that's where some traditional forecasting methods may fall down um, because they may be able to pick up uh, one of those seasonalities, but they definitely won't pick up these um, special events that are happening. Um, and a profit can do that very nicely. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the seasonality again in a bit more detail. So this is um, this has taken all the data and it's just divided it by month and uh, plotted a box plot so we can see the monthly variation within the data, ignoring trend. Uh, so here's our these are the outliers of our of our box plots. Um, so that that's New Year's Day in January every year. Um, and what can we see? Well, if we look at the medians, uh, we can see that there's definitely an increase in December, uh, possibly a bit of an e increase in the summer and a dip around this sort of time, maybe. It's not 100% clear, but that's suggesting there is some sort of seasonality by month of the year. Let's have a look at it. Um, on a daily level, like a day of week level, uh, well, what we can see is that the weekend has higher demand from the week. That's pretty clear. There's possibly a bit of a sort of U shape here within the week, if we look at the medians, although that's debatable, um, but definitely the uh, Saturday and Sunday is higher than the weekdays. So how does profit work with this type of data? What sort of model is it? So it's what we call an additive model. Um, so we have components of that model and we add those components together. So we have trend, seasonality, holidays or special events, and then errors. Now what's, what's interesting about profit is this is a simple structure, right? We just add these components together. But the neat thing is that each of these components can be non-linear. So we can have trend that follows, that changes over time. We can have odd seasonalities in there. Um, and both of those can be non-linear, but we just add them together. And that's, a, that's really helpful. The other thing that uh, is odd about profit is it has um, IID errors, which stands for independent identically distributed errors and you remember from one of the previous lectures I spoke about something called autocorrelation um, and autocorrelation is where values within a time series um, are correlated with each other over time um, and the errors of your forecasting models will also be correlated over time so profit assumes that's not the case um, so it kind of goes against all of well, a large amount of other forecasting literature. Now, why, why can it do that? Um, so the general philosophy behind, behind profit is once it's fitted the trend, the seasonality and the holidays, um, that's called a whitening of the errors. So what it's doing is it's trying to take out all the autocorrelation and patterns within the errors. And so what you end up with are errors which are uncorrelated. Now, in practice, that might not work 100%, um, but certainly empirically, profit seems to be a very good package at forecasting. So although it is uh, kind of different from some of the other forecasting approaches, it seems to work very well. 
So how do each of those components work? Um, so the trend component, and we'll take a look at the trend of the, um, the ambulance data in a moment, uh, that fits what's called a piecewise linear model to the data. So, so that just means that we can change um, the trend within the data at certain points. Um, so it can be a linear model that's fitted or it can be what's called a logistic model. Um, so a logistic would um, uh, taper off growth over time. So it wouldn't just continue, if you had an upwards trend, it wouldn't just continually grow, it would, it would taper that off over time. It would, it would tend to some level. So that might sound quite complicated. Uh, in practice, it isn't complicated because Profit automatically detects the trend points for you. Um, it does that using a Bayesian approach. Um, so what it does is it fits, it automatically fit, uh, automatically selects a large number of train, trend points, um, and then it uses the data to update its parameters to decide are those trend points real or not. And what you end up with just a few trend uh, uh, automatic change points in the data. Um, so seasonality is also automatically detected by profit. Um, what's cool about it is you can you can have seasonality at different at different periodicities in the data. So the obvious ones are month of the year. So you would fit. Um, uh, what's called a Fourier series. So these are sine and cosine curves. You would fit those to the data and you can fit any combination of those to get whatever pattern you need. And Profit chooses that automatically for you. And you might also do that by day of year. And that would again be modeled by a Fourier series. And then for day of week, what you would do is, is bring in what's called dummy variables. And if you're familiar with regression, uh, you should be familiar with the concept of dummy variables. So those are just variables that are either zero or one. Another name for it is a categorical variable. Um, so we use those to model um, the day of the week pattern. And again, all of this is automatically detected. And then holidays are also very easy to uh, use with profit. Um, we have built-in holidays and special events. So for example, um, Christmas is on its way. It's really easy to model Christmas with, with profit. Um, it, it has all of those for different countries within there. If you're using international data, more likely you'll be using UK data um, and all of that is built in there. Very easy to use and we'll learn how to do that. Um, but it can handle any date. You know, it's just, it's just another dummy variable within the data, uh, within, the, within the model. And you can, you can add your own manually to the model, that's no problem at all. Um, so the models we'll look at today will be um, straightforward time series analysis of univariate data. Um, but when you're building models for real, you might be interested in uh, improving your forecast accuracy by bringing in other variables. So with healthcare, a classic one might be, or with emergency healthcare, a classic one might be the weather or, or air quality. So for example, if you were forecasting respiratory admissions, you might be interested in um, what the weather has looked like over the past couple of weeks. Um, or you might be interested in, you know, if it's very icy, there might be an influx of people who've fallen over or if it's been extremely windy. It's very easy to build that into profit through its additional regressors function. Um, we can also bring in performance of other healthcare systems. If you think the healthcare, the demand for the healthcare system you're forecasting is affected by the performance or the demand on another system, you can incorporate that into the profit model, no problem. And of course, you could have combinations of the above. So the, the, the difficulty with multivariable forecasting is that when you're predicting quite far into the future, you'll need forecasts of your other regressors. 
Um, so if you're predicting 12 weeks into the future, it's unlikely that the weather last week will have had an effect on your respiratory admissions, for example. Um, so you will need some. You might need to look at weather forecasts, for example, over that time period. Um, that becomes quite tricky. Where do you get that data from? How reliable is that data? If that data has a certain amount of uncertainty anyway. How do you incorporate that uncertainty into your into your forecast? Um, so very quickly it becomes it becomes difficult. Uh, and also, no one's got a crystal ball about the future. Um, you know, no one really predicted what the impact of COVID would be on health services. No one predicted there would be a lockdown in March last year, for example. So let's take a look at some of the outputs of profit. Um, so this is this is the decomposed model. So this this is the uh, the first box in our in our model of what profit looks like under the hood, and that's trend. So we've we've fitted a profit model to the ambulance service data, and this is what it's saying the trend is over time. Uh, so we can see that the trend is not completely linear. There's a clear there's a clear change point here in um, the sort of start of 2016 where the trend decreased, and then towards the end of 2016 it starts to increase again, and there's a bit of a trend shift here as well. So what profit will have done is it would have fitted a large number. Well, first of all, it would have allocated a large number of potential change, change points in the data. And then it will have looked at the data and made a decision about which of those change points were real and which weren't. Um, so we've ended up with just a few, which is kind of what you want, really. So it's, it's a nice it's a nice approach. And then at the end of the time series, um, there's a bit of uncertainty around what the trend actually is. Um, because we don't we don't know if train, the trend has shifted or, or not towards the end of the time series. Now this actually has an impact on your forecasts. If you've just got a nice smooth trend with very little change in it, that implies that in the future it will be similar. However, if there's a large number of change points where the time series chops and changes in its level, um, that implies it's very difficult to predict the future. So the first of those examples, the smooth trend, will reduce the uncertainty around your predictions. Whereas when there's lots of change points within the data, you'll see your prediction intervals become a bit wider because it's less certain about what the forecast will be. Okay, so moving on. Uh, Day of week seasonality. So here we've just got dummy variables fitted to the model. Um, so if you remember back, we looked at our box plots by day of week uh, and we saw that Saturday and Sunday were generally higher. So that profit agrees with us, that's what it's fitted. Um, so we can see on average it expects uh, Sunday to be about 25 above the trend and Saturday to be about 35 above the trend, and that it has this U shape, so it dips during the week. So that's kind of what we would have expected from the data. This is some confirmation of our preliminary analysis. So that's nice. So that's the repeating pattern we're going to get by day of week with the profit model. And here's our monthly seasonality. Um, so this is, a, this is fitted by Fourier series which remember is just sine and cosine waves, pairs, that have been put together to produce the shape that we want in our data. So we can see here that in general, December um, and January it is, is quite high, then it drops down again and we get this, we get this sort of a secondary lump within the middle of the year, dropping down demand in September and then gradually ramping up through the through the winter. So again, that's that's what we expected from our uh, box plot by month of the year. And then last but no means least, um, our holidays, our spiky holidays. Um, and what Profit has done is it's fitted a dummy variable for New Year's Day. 
and we can see that um, it fits a very simple model uh, and it's basically saying on New Year's Day we expect New Year's Day to be about 140 calls extra than any other day of the year. And then Profit works by adding those components together. And we end up with our fitted model and our forecast. So the black line, the black dots represent the real data. The blue, dark blue represents our point forecast. And remember that's the middle of our forecasting distribution. The light blue lines represent our, our prediction intervals around that. And these are, I think, 80% prediction intervals. So you expect about 80% of the data to fall within them. So that's why you'll see some of, some of the points out of it. We wouldn't expect to pick all of those up. So where the black lines stop is the end of our training data. And then from beyond that, we have our forecast. Um, so what we can see is that profit produces quite a nice looking forecast. It looks very similar to, to previous data as we might expect. Um, you can see that the trend, there isn't much trend there, but there is a clear seasonal pattern. And here on the 1st of uh, January 2018, we get our spike as we would expect. So it's, it's a nice way to forecast this complex data with multiple types of seasonality within it and special events. So you can imagine other time series from health services will have more special events than just New Year's Day um, and you can incorporate that very easily and that's, that's one of the big benefits of using profit. OK, so let's let's move on now and we'll have a look at using profits um, in a lab.